ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಚ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಗನ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಜಿ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ 
ವಿಷಮಾನು ವಿಶೇಷಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪುತ್ರ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ 
he was talking on the yoga process and all. And now in chapter 29, uh, is about the uh, about uh, about the path of bhakti and all. So Prabhuji has nicely explained yesterday, okay, uh, about the various uh, uh, about the uh, various uh, uh, gunas actually uh, uh, about the bhakti uh, affected by the gunas and all. Okay, so he was explaining nicely about uh, tamasic uh, the ignorance. Uh, he was explaining the bhakti affected by by the uh, mood of the passion, right? Uh, <clears throat> mood of the passion and also bhakti in the mode of goodness and all. So bhakti affected by the gunas. And then he was explaining some part of the pure bhakti as well, right? And uh, uh, that was being explained. And uh, uh, the next uh, next few verses, which we will be reading today, right? We, which we will be reading and covering today, uh, would be mainly on the uh, the respect uh, respect of all living activities and also the power of the uh, power of the time or the nature of the time, which uh, devotee asked actually uh, are asked to request Kapila to explain in that. Okay. So uh, we'll go through the, the verse from 21. Okay. Okay. So yesterday, yesterday Prabhupada has nicely covered the bhakti affected by gunas also and uh, some part of the pure bhakti as well. Okay. So uh, pure bhakti. Uh, right. So we'll start from verse text number 21. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to uh, recite this, try to recite this verse, okay. Aham sarveshu bhuteshu bhutatma bhutatma visishta sadha tam avadhyaya mamadhyaya kurute kurute richi vidam balam. Yeah, translation, I am present in every living entity as a super soul. If someone neglects or disregards that super soul everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply meditation. So here, in this particular verse, uh, here, uh, the, uh, the uh, Kapila or uh, the Prabhupada is trying to Talk on one aspect which which is related to neglect. Okay, neglect or disregard. Okay, this is the important point. So this this uh, disregard or neglect, right? Uh, uh, which uh, uh, a devotee does actually, right? If he he he, he neglects the uh, the uh, the uh, if he doesn't see the super soul in the uh, in the other person's right super soul. Is in the heart of the, is residing in the heart of every living entity. And if he doesn't respect uh, this super soul, which, which is in other living entity, then there is no point, right? So even though if he, perform, if he performs the worship to the deity in the temple, right? Uh, following all, 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 all kinds of vidhi, right? Uh, all kinds of vidhi, but st still, uh, uh, it's a it's a, a simple it's a simple imitation rather than it's a not a form of the pure bhakti that is what we explain. So so this uh, yeah so uh, so what is that yeah yeah avajjaya uh, disregard so this word is very important so we cannot neglect we cannot neglect. Uh, the uh, the super soul aspects in the, all the living entities. Okay, we, we may perform all the we may perform all the uh, uh, all the we may try to worship the deities, deities but we have to respect the others because uh, the super soul is seated in everyone's uh, in every living entity actually. Okay, can anyone uh, read the purport please? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare. 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 Hare.
in purified consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one sees the presence of Krishna everywhere. Therefore, if one only engages in deity worship in the temple and does not consider other living entities, then he is in the lowest grade of lowest grade of devotional service. One who worships the deity in the temple and does not show respect to others in a devotee on the material platform in the lowest stage of devotional service. A devotee should try to understand everything in relationship with Krishna and try to serve everything in that spirit. To serve everything means to engage everything in the service of Krishna. If a person is innocent and does not know his relationship with Krishna, an advanced devotee should try to engage him in the service of Krishna. One who is advanced in Krishna consciousness can engage not only the living being, but everything in the service of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, so we cannot uh, disregard or neglect any uh, any any uh, living entity actually. So we have to uh, respect every living entity. So that is what we said. Even if we uh, we if we perform the uh, bhakti or if we perform the uh, the deity worship, but uh, if we disregard or neglect the other uh, other living entity, then that is that it's a it's a kind of a Causing uh, it's a, it's a, it's causing an offense and all. so this offense will uh, will be an obstacle uh, obstacle in our path of bhakti and all. so in uh, this verse and uh, coming verse uh, it says we are trying to understand what are the obstacles in the path of the bhakti uh, so the same thing is being explained by Kapila Dev right so what are the obstacles in the path of the bhakti so this was. Uh, neglect, neglect, neglectful was the was one of the uh, obstacle actually, which is in part of bhakti. So uh, one question actually, uh, can you can anyone say any examples uh, from Shrimad Bhagavatam or anywhere where uh, where the, some of them are being neglectful actually uh, uh, was neglectful and uh, that was an obstacle in their path of bhakti. An example uh, you can recollect or remember. Hare Krishna. An example you can hear. Uh, any example in Srimad Bhagavatam where, where some devotee uh, uh, feel the, uh, the neglectful and uh, uh, the, uh, that was an uh, obstacle in this part of Bhakti. Okay, so uh, one example maybe uh, we can uh, relate is Bharat Maharaj actually. Uh, Bharat Maharaj was 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 uh, performing nicely uh, the the uh, Bhakti uh, in the in the forest, right? But uh, he was attached to the uh, deer and all. Uh, because of this uh, attachment to dear, uh, uh, because of his neglectful in the, uh, in the path of the bhakti, right? Uh, he has to take birth as a dear and all. So there are, uh, there are, we can see that the birth, uh, taking his birth as a dear actually, uh, there are two things. You know, normally, somebody take uh, the birth of the dear because of past karma and all, right? Uh, because of past karma, he, he is in the uh, process of uh, attaining that body, right? 84 lakh species and all. And, but Bharat Maharaj's case was a different, right? Because he was taken the, uh, the, the uh, he was taken, he was, uh, uh, he was given the body of deer because uh, he was attached to the, uh, uh, attached to the deer in the last moment and all, right? So the, his case was different. Though he was taken as a deer, uh, he could remember what he has done in the state in the last life. So, so that is the uh, mercy of the Lord, actually, where he could remember what the mistake he has done, uh, what, uh, what, what was uh, done, what was the uh, 
done by him uh, so that he can correct the mistake. So that so though he has taken the birth of deer, uh, is uh, uh, there are many other deers also taken the birth of deer, but uh, Bharat Maharaj has, has taken the birth of deer, but he could remember the previous life, whereas the other deers uh, do not remember maybe because. Uh, they have not performed any bhakti in the previous lives and all. But uh, though he was uh, neglectful, but he was uh, given a chance to remember the previous uh, uh, incidences and he can correct uh, and all. Okay. So that is the one example actually, uh, which you can correlate with the, with the path, with this, uh, the obstacle of uh, being neglectful and all. Okay. Let's go to sec twenty second verse. Yeah. Yogam sarveshu bhuteshu santam atmanam ishwaram itvacham bhajate bhodhyayat basmani eva johit johoti sa. So one who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples, but does not know that the Supreme Lord as a Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart, must be in ignorance and is compared to the one who offers oblation, uh, oblations into ashes. So can anyone read the perfect, uh, perfect list? Hare Krishna Prabhu. So let it run. Okay. Purport. It is stated clearly here in that the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his plenary expansion of Super Soul is present in all living entities. The living entities have 8.4 million different kinds of bodies and the Supreme Personality of Godhead is living in every body both as the individual soul as the super soul. Since the individual soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, in that sense, the Lord is living in every body and as super soul, the Lord is also present as in witness. In, in both cases, the presence of God in every living entity is essential. Therefore, person who profess to belong to some religious sect, uh, religious sect word who do not feel the presence of the Supreme Personality of God had in every living entity and everywhere else are in the mode of ignorance. If without the uh, preliminary knowledge of the Lord's appliances, one simply attaches himself to the rituals in a temple, church or mosque, it is, it is as if were offering butter into ashes rather than into the fire. One offers sacrifices by uh, pouring, uh, pouring clarified what, uh, butter into a fire and changing uh, Vedic uh, mantras, chanting Vedic mantras, but even if there are Vedic mantras uh, and all conditions are favorable. If the uh, clarified butter, uh, butter is poured on ashes, then such a sacrifice will be useless. In other words, a devotee, even in in other words, a devotee should not ignore any living entity. The devotee must know that in every living living entity, however insignificant he may be, even in end, God is present, and therefore uh, every living entity should be kindly treated and should not be subjected to any violence. In, in modern civilized society, slaughterhouses are regularly maintained and supported by a certain type of religious principles. But without knowledge of presence of God in every living entity, any so-called advancement of human civilization, either spiritual or material, is to be understood as being in the mode of ignorance. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhupada Prabhupada. Okay. So, we can understand here, from here, that uh, there is uh, hatredness, right? Hatred. You cannot uh, hate other living entities, okay? 
we know that the uh, you know, every living entity is a part and parcel of the Lord, right? Every living entity is a part and parcel of Lord. So uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, we cannot think ourselves as a superior, and we cannot hate other living entities. You know? uh, what to speak of? Uh, not only human beings, the other living entities also that is what Prabhupada is uh, trying to explain. Okay. So yeah, this is what. Okay. So yeah. And here the example the Prabhupada gives that the the, so the people are opening the slaughterhouses, right? Or given the uh, opening the slaughter and uh, houses. And they are killing the animals and all. So the, and they 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 actually uh, follow some kind of a religious principle, but uh, uh, but but they they are they are maintaining the slaughterhouses and all. So they do not have any love towards the other living entities. Okay. Well, 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 when we are in the path of bhakti, we should understand. Uh, we should understand that we as we read in the previous verse. Right, we should we can we, when we are in the path of bhakti, right? The, we will understand our relationship with the God and also the relationship, uh, uh, and also the relationship the other living entities has with the with the God and God, right? So that we can understand. Uh, then only uh, we are a pure devotee. Then, then only we are considered to be pure pure devotee, right? Uh, if you are trying to kill the animals, right, uh, and that means that we are we are thinking that other living entities are not uh, are not not part and parcel of the Lord. Right? There is a, some kind of hatred there, right? Uh, there is some kind of hatred there, right? Uh, so, am bija pradapita, right? That is what Krishna says. So if is a is a the seed given father to all the living entities and we are the uh, we are uh, we are we are part and parcel of the Lord, right? We are uh, we belong to Lord and Lord. So there cannot be any uh, any hatredness. We should understand our relationship with the God, also a relationship of other living entities of the Lord. If somebody uh, is not understanding the relationship as a the pure devotee will always. Uh, try to uh, uh, try to give the service so that uh, his relationship is established uh, with the Lord and Lord. That is what is given. So there is a uh, one line. There is a one saying where Jesus says, "Hate the sin, not the sinner and Lord." Right? The, the the Jesus used to say, right? So we cannot have any hatred uh, towards uh, hatred towards a sinner actually. We can hate the sin, but there cannot be hate to the uh, hate to uh, hate towards the sinner and all, right? So, so similarly, Prabhupada also uh, never hated the hippies, right? Uh, there was a lot of hatredness uh, for the hippies, but uh, Prabhupada was never disrespectful and uh, he never hated uh, the uh, hippies and all. So these are uh, very, very uh, these are the examples actually which. Uh, which are there, uh, 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 which are there. Uh, uh, okay, so yes. Yeah, uh, these are some of the examples. Then we'll go to the next verse. Yeah, let's use this. So here again, uh, as we see, uh, this is also one of the uh, hatredness is the one being highlighted over here. So hatredness is also one of the obstacle in the path of the bhakti, and, uh, which is an offense action in the path of the bhakti. This, uh, yeah, I'm trying to uh, recite this verse. Visata para kaiva. Manilo Bilna Darsana Darshina Bhutesh Baddava Vairasya Namana Santim Rishati One who offers the respect 
but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist, never attains peace of the mind because of inimical behavior towards the other living entities. Purpose. Anybody read the purpose, please? Hare Krishna, Ram. Shall I, Prabhu? Yes, Parpadvai is divinely Sisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shala Prabhupada Shala Prabhupada Kije. In this verse, two phrases, Bhuteshu Bhadda Vairasya, inimical towards others, and Dvishata Parakaye, envious of another's body, are significant. One who is envious of or inimical towards others never experiences any happiness. A devotee's vision, therefore, must be perfect. He should ignore bodily distinctions and should see only the presence of the part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and the Lord himself in his plenary expansion as super soul. That is the vision of a pure devotee. The bodily expression of a particular type of living entity is always ignored by the devotee. It is expressed here in that the Lord is always eager to deliver the conditioned souls who have been encaged within material bodies. Devotees are expected to carry the message or desire of the Lord to such conditioned souls and enlighten them with Krishna consciousness. Thus, they may be elevated to transcendental spiritual life and the mission of their lives will be successful. Of course, this is not possible for living entities who are lower than human beings. But human society, it is feasible that all living entities can be enlightened with Krishna consciousness. Even living entities who are lower than human can be raised to Krishna consciousness by other methods. For example, Sivananda Sena, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, delivered a dog by feeding him prasada. Distribution of prasada or remnants of foodstuffs offered to the Lord, even to the ignorant masses of people and to animals, give such living entities the chance for elevation to Krishna consciousness. Factually, it happened that the same dog, when met by Lord Chaitanya at Puri, was liberated from the material condition. It is especially mentioned here that a devotee must be free from all violence, Jiva Himsa. Lord Chaitanya has recommended that a devotee not commit violence to any living entity. Sometimes the question is raised that since vegetables also have life and devotees take vegetables, Vegetable foodstuff isn't that violence. Firstly, however, taking some leaves, twigs or fruit from a tree or plant does not kill the plant. Besides that, Jiva Himsa means that since every living entity has to pass through a particular type of body according to his past karma. Although every living entity is eternal, he should not be disturbed in his gradual evolution. A devotee has to execute the principles of devotional service exactly as they are. And he must know that however ins insignificant a living entity may be, the Lord is present within him. A devotee must realize this universal presence of the Lord. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. So here, here uh, the, it is being explained that we cannot have criticism, right? criticism to, uh, towards any living entity. Right. Yeah, uh, we cannot have any criticism towards any living entity. Right. If somebody living entity is uh, inferior, right. If something somebody is inferior and living there, then we have to see that you know, how to we can pass on the message of Krishna to him, and we have to up, try to uplift that living entity. Right. Uh, try to uplift that uh, living entity. Uh, through the message or whatever the message Krishna has given, uh, we, can, we should uplift them by giving Krishna consciousness. Right? Here, explain uh, here example of uh, example of uh, Shivananda Sen is given where he tried to uplift, right? Uplift one of the living entity, which is a dog, which is inferior uh, to the human being actually, but uh, he has given some prasada uh, to the dog. And uh, due to due to uh, due to uh, accepting that prasad, that that dog got a chance to uh, with that uh, with that uh, uh, consuming that prasad, that God uh, dog has got chance to be Lord Chaitanya, and it could uh, it could chant and 
uh, go back to God and all. Uh, so, so that is what being explained. So, uh, we should not be, uh, we should not have any criticism towards the imperial living entities. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, we, we try to uplift them by giving the Krishna consciousness to them. Uh, the Krishna consciousness are even are giving the prasada, right? Is also uh, is also uh, it's a kind of uplift, up, up, uplifting them. Right? So that is what. Uh, one of the interesting thing actually, which uh, which uh, uh, which we which I at least came across. I think you also you all also might have come across. Because the many people ask this, well, you are not eating non veg, uh, well, you are eating the vegetables also, that also has some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, life and all. So, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, whether that is acceptable, that is everyone asks, right? So, here, nicely, Prabhupada explained that uh, nicely, that killing, uh, it's, uh, we are not we are actually killing a tree or plant. We just accepting the fruits or vegetables given by the tree and all, uh, the plant, right? So we are not trying to kill any uh, uh, the living uh, uh, the living entity as well. So the consciousness of the plant might be low than uh, that the other animals, but there is a uh, there is a consciousness and there is a that is also considered to be a living entity and all, right? There are we can understand that even a stone has some kind of consciousness and all, right? So that is, but that will be explained in the next chapters and all, and next verses, coming verses and all. So so we cannot have any criticism towards any living entity. Uh, we can just try to give Krishna consciousness or even if we offering the prasadam of Krishna uh, will uplift uh, uh, the uh, the lower. A lower or inferior, uh, inferior species of living entity. Uh, in that way, we can establish uh, the relationship with the uh, with the God. Uh, that is our uh, that should be our efforts, right? Because if we try to uh, if you try to establish if you see everyone uh, as a part and parcel of the Lord, as a children of uh, of Krishna, then we try to. Uh, give the Krishna's message and we try to, uh, we do not see them as an inferior, but we try to give them the message of the Krishna and uplift them in the Krishna consciousness. So that uh, that will make us actually, uh, that will make us, uh, that will not cause us, uh, that will uh, not uh, uh, make us to, or obtain us from uh, be causing an offense to uh, in the path of bhakti actually. So, so the, we can overcome bhakti. Uh, we can sorry, we can overcome the offense of uh, criticism by just giving the Krishna consciousness and all. So, uh, Prabhuji Sharmatanji, any example we can we can give uh, based on the on the criticism actually. Any devotee uh, or uh, any example from Srimad Bhagavatam Ramayana anywhere where. Where anybody has caused criticism, and any devotee has caused criticism, and it uh, has uh, caused the obstacle in bhakti. Who is Chitraket Maharaj? Which Prabhuji? Chitraket Maharaj. Chitraket Maharaj. Yes, Chitraket Maharaj. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Any more examples? Okay, well, example is also uh, Daksha uh, causing an offense towards Shivji. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, Ambarish Maharaj. Uh, Daksha also causing uh, the criticism against Shivji, right? Uh, Lord Shiva uh, and all, right? So these are these are the examples. Uh, one time, uh, one time. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was asked actually uh, by the one of the I think uh, the press person. So, are you not making uh, this all all the people, uh, all all of them to chant uh, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra? And are you, are you not making all these persons as covered and all? So uh, he was being asked like that. So Srila Prabhupada explained uh, him that. Uh, there are two. There are two. Uh, two things. Uh, there are two. In the Ramayana also, and in Purukshetra also, there is a. There are a, There is a Lord and there is a devotee, right? There is a Lord and devotee. 
is both the cases that there is lord and devotees but the the, the devotee is given the opportunity like halvanji was uh, given the opportunity uh, uh, opportunity actually and similarly the pandavas were to given the opportunity so though the lord was there so they were given the opportunity so it's not only uh, the following the path of the bhakti or chanting the hare krishna but also if required they they should be able to fight and all right so uh, the learning the bhagavad gita bhagavatam right chanting hare krishna will not will is not the, should not uh, should not make some word covered actually it should uh, it's also uh, from this learning we can understand that that the if required this vaishnava should be able to stand up and fight and all uh, stand up and fight so that kind of criticism was uh, criticism was uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, such kind of criticism was done by the press reporters and all but the proper was trying to nicely answer that kind of criticism and all so these are one of the some of the examples uh, where, where the criticism uh, of the criticism actually uh, which should not be uh, obstacles actually in the path of the bhakti okay so from 22 to uh, uh, yeah from the uh, 22 to 24 actually we, we are trying to understand the various uh, obstacles actually there is a uh, obstacle that come in the path of the bhakti and all uh, and uh, we try to do uh, and do some offenses in the path of bhakti right can somebody read the uh, yeah i'll read the translation can somebody be ready to read the purport actually okay so my dear brother even if he worships with proper rituals and paraphernalia a person who is ignorant of my presence in all living entities never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple yeah can somebody read with the, read the purport hare krishna prabhu ji shall i read yes hare krishna prabhu ji there are 64 different prescriptions for worship of the deity in the temple there are many items offered to the deity some valuable and some less valuable it is prescribed in bhagavad gita if a devotee offers me a small flower a leaf some water or a little fruit i will accept it the real purpose is to exhibit one's loving devotion to the lord the offerings themselves are secondary if one has not developed loving devotion to the lord and simply offers many kinds of foodstuffs fruits and flowers without real devotion the offering will not be accepted by the lord we cannot bribe the personality of god he is so great that our bribery has no value nor has he any scarcity since he is full in himself what can we offer him everything is produced by him we simply offer to show our love and gratitude to the lord this gratitude and love for god is exhibited by a pure devotee who knows that the lord lives in every living entity as such temple worship necessarily includes distribution of prasada it is not that one should create a temple in his private apartment or private room offer something to the lord and then eat of course that is better than simply cooking foodstuffs and eating without understanding one's relationship with the supreme lord people who act in this manner are just like animals but the devotee who wants to elevate himself to the higher level of understanding must know that the lord is present in every living entity and as stated in the previous verse one should be compassionate to other living entities a devotee should worship the supreme lord be friendly to persons who are on the same level and be compassionate to the ignorant one should exhibit his exhibition for ignorant living entities by distributing prasada distribution of prasada to the ignorant masses of people is essential for persons who make offerings to the personality of god real love and devotion is accepted by the lord many valuable food stuffs may be presented to a person but if the person is not hungry all such offerings are useless for him similarly we may offer many valuable items to the deity but if we have no real sense of devotion and no real sense of lord's presence everywhere then we are lacking in devotional service in such a state of ignorance we cannot offer anything acceptable to the lord hare krishna thank you bhakti yeah so it is uh, it is likely be explained here right where the 
the pro proper worship is done with all the all the all the paraphernalia so the dps but if uh, if uh, right uh, with all the rituals and paraphernalia but uh, if uh, if we are not uh, if you are not thinking that if you uh, are not realizing the presence of lord in uh, in the every living entity then then it's a we are useless and all right so we have to see that lord is present as a parmatma yeah parmatma in every living entity uh, right that then only uh, then only uh, that is a per, that is a per, that is perfect kind of uh, you know you have to perform you have to perform the duty and also we have to worship the uh, so how to so what what we here we are kind of solution kind of so we have to uh, we have to not only uh, do the we, are, we not only we have to worship the deities but also we have to we have to see the presence of lord in everywhere actually okay so it can, that is what we mentioned over here okay That only pleases the Lord, right? So that is the most clear. Yeah. Then we will go on to the next verse. Yeah. Twenty-five. Text twenty-five. Performing is these prescribed duties. One should worship the deity of Supreme Personality. Until God realizes the presence in his own heart and in the hearts of other living entities as well. अरे वो मोनरा जल्दी आराम से करते हैं कभी क्या सभी है ये कैन यू म्यूट समझ या या कैन समबडी रीड द परपट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ वर्स Yeah, performing is prescribed duties. One should worship the deity of the supreme personality of Godhead until one realizes by presence in his own heart and in the heart of other living entities as well. Yeah, can somebody read it perfect, Prabhuji? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, worship of the deities. Um. How the supreme personality of God had is prescribed between uh, prescribed here here with even for persons who are simply discharging their prescribed duties. There are prescribed du uh, duties for the different uh, for the different uh, social uh, social classes of men, the Brahmanas, the Vaishyas, the Kshatriyas, and the Sudras, and for the different uh, ashramas. ब्रह्मचार्य ग्रस्था बाण प्रस्था एंड सन्यासा वन शुड वर्शिप द डिटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड अंटिल वन एप्रिशिएट्स द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द लॉर्ड इन एवरी लिविंग एंटिटीज इन अदर वर्ड्स वन शुड नॉट बी सेटिस्फाइड सिंपली बाय डिस्चार्जिंग हिज ड्यूटीज प्रॉपरली ही मस्ट रियलाइज हिज रिलेशनशिप एंड एंड द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ अदर लिविंग एंटिटीज विद द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड If he does not understand this, then even though he discharges his uh, prescribed duties properly, it is it is to be understood that he is simply lab uh, laboring without profit. The word uh, the word swa karma krit in this verse is very significant. Swa karma krit is one who engages in discharging his prescribed duties. it is not that one who has become a devotee of the lord or who engages in devotional service should give up his prescribed duties no one should be lazy under the plea of devotional service one has to execute devotional service according to his prescribed duties swa karma krit means that one should discharge the duties prescribed for him without neglect hari krishna bhai hari krishna bhai Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So here, uh, the solution part has been explained actually. So when we uh, uh, when we uh, do some offences in the path of bhakti, right? Uh, 
how to how to overcome this uh, obstacles actually these offenses okay so uh, lord kapiladev is trying to explain lord kapiladev is trying to explain uh, the uh, explain devuti so how to uh, how to come out of uh, these uh, offenses or how to, what is the solution uh, for these offenses and all so 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 not only performing duty right performing the duty uh, based on our uh, varna and ashrama right not only performing duty but also uh, yeah, apart from performing duty based on our uh, uh, varna and ashrama we should worship of deity should also be done so when that is done then we realize the presence of the lord everywhere okay so we have to perform our duty based on the uh, varna and ashrama and also we have to worship the deities so slowly we will realize that the the presence of the lord everywhere right so that is been explained by right? here okay we will go on to next verse Yeah, yeah, text for this is as a blazing fire. Yeah, as a blazing fire of death, I cause a great fear to whoever makes the least discrimination between the himself and the other living entities because of differential outlook. Per per. Uh, there are there there are bodily differentiation among the all the varieties of living entities, but a devotee should not distinguish between one living entity and another. Are uh, on such a basis, a devotee outlook should be that both both the soul and super soul are equally present in all varieties of living entities. Okay, so yet uh, yet yeah, we cannot. we cannot discriminate between uh, we cannot have any discrimination between the uh, living entity that is the that is what the character of a uh, devotee being explained okay so the uh, the devotee should see the soul and super soul uh, we are present in every living entity okay so text 27 yeah therefore through the charitable gifts and attention as well as through the friendly behavior and by giving all the, all to be alive one should propitiate pro, uh, pro, uh, propitiate the who abides in all creatures as their very self okay so yeah can everybody read the purport so here uh, the uh, here the uh, here the lord kapila is trying to explain what how 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 we can uh, uh, what uh, how the how can we see the lord everywhere actually how can we see the lord so we can behave friendly with others right we can offer charity 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 also so charitable gift should be given to somebody who are, who is actually inferior right so charity can be given only to the poor right uh, but we can offer respect to the rich person and all okay so charitable gifts can be given to the who are inferior right and we can offer respect to the persons who are superior to us right we can behave friendly with the, all the living entities right so we can have the equal vision giving all right we can have the equal vision uh, towards uh, all the living entities so these four kind four things we be explain be behaving friendly uh, giving charity respect and equal vision so this will this will help us to realize the presence of lord everywhere yeah tell somebody read the purport please yes prabhu hari krishna it should not be misunderstood that because the spiritual the super soul is dwelling uh, within the heart of living entity the individual soul has become equal to him the equality of super soul and individual soul is misconceived by the impersonalist here it is distinctly mentioned that the individual soul should be recognized in the relationship with the supreme personality of godhead the method of worshiping the individual soul is described here as either giving charitable gifts or 
behaving in a friendly manner, free from any separatist outlook. The impersonalist sometimes accepts a poor individual soul as being the Narayan, meaning that Narayana, the supreme personality of Godhead, has become poor. This is contradiction. The supreme personality of Godhead is full of opulence. He can uh, agree to live with the poor soul or even with an animal, but this does not make him poor. There are two Sanskrit words used here, mana and dana. Mana indicates a superior and a dana indicates one who gives charitable gifts or is compassionate towards the inferior. We cannot treat the Supreme Personality of Godhead as an inferior who is, depend, is in, who is dependent on our chari charitable gifts. When we give charity, it is to a person who is inferior in his material or economic condition. Charity is not given to a rich man. Similarly, it is explicitly stated that Mana, respect, is offered to a superior and charity is offered to an inferior. The living, even living entities, according to the different results of fruitive activities, may become rich or poor, but the super, super, supreme person of God is unchangeable. He is always in full in six opulences. Treating a living entity equally does not mean treating him as one would treat a supreme personality of God. Compassion and friendliness do not necessitate falsely elevating someone the exalted position of supreme personality of Godhead. We should not at the same time misunderstand that the super soul situated in the heart of an animal like a hog and the super soul situated in the heart of a learned brahmana are different. The super soul is in all living entities is the same supreme personality of Godhead. By his omnipotency, he can live anywhere and he Prabhu, can you scroll? Yeah. Can you see? Uh, everywhere and he can create his Vaikuntha situation everywhere. This that is his inconceivable potency. Therefore, when Narayana is living in the heart of his heart, he does not become a hog Narayana. He is always Narayana and is unaffected by the body of the hog. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. So here, so wherever, <coughs> so these are some of the uh, some of the solutions actually were well, uh, been given, right? Solutions given by <coughs> solutions given by Lord Kapila. Actually, where we can uh, we can behave friendly with all the living entities, maybe with the equal uh, equal uh, among us, and maybe we can give charity to the inferior. Like uh, inferior can be a poor person, right? We can give charity, but we cannot give charity to the, the rich person, right? But we can give uh, the charity. Uh, we can give respect to the rich person. Okay. So charity should be given to the poor, respect should be given to the rich person. Okay. And you can have the equal vision towards all the living entities. Right? Equal vision. Uh, that is what also uh, in the earlier verse also it is being explained, right? Uh, the Papa says that right, we, we don't have equal vision, right? If we consider some living entities as inferior. The, then uh, we try to kill and eat. So openings of slaughterhouses and all these things. So equal vision, we should have the equal vision and all. Okay. Equal vision does not mean that that we should not treat uh, the tiger and also the cow same. Okay. Uh, equal vision doesn't mean that. Right? So that is what uh, 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 the, we have to treat tiger. Uh, we have to be, we should be afraid of the tiger, but it doesn't. We have to try to give the food to, to the tiger and all, but uh, uh, we cannot treat tiger as a cow and all. So, uh, it should be uh, so we should uh, apply the common sense and all. So, these are the four things being explained actually be a friendly, charity, respect, and equal vision towards, uh, towards the all the vision entities. Okay. This, these are the solutions towards the, uh, 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 to progress in the path of our, our, our path of bhakti, or to realize the presence of Lord in the every living entity. Okay, so we'll go on to the next text, text 28. So text 28, yeah, 28 to 36 actually is about the gradation of jivas. Okay, so gradation of jivas. Uh, it is being explained from 28 to 36, where the jivas uh, start from inanimate objects to, to, to pure devotee and all. To, so finally, to the pure devotees and all. So such kind of, uh, that is what the gradation of jivas is being explained. Okay. So uh, it's about this. Yeah. 
translation of the 28 text navigate these are superior to inanimate objects O oh, blessed mother and among them many entities who displace life symptoms are better. Animals with a developed consciousness are better than them and better still are those who have developed sense perception. So here all the examples of various, uh, various living entities will be given. Uh, can somebody read the purpose of 28 verse? Yeah. So share your screen, Prabhuji. I think screen oh, is not. Yeah. Shall I read, Prabhuji? Yes, Prabhuji. One minute, Prabhuji. One minute, Prabhuji. It becomes very large. Superior elevator, so blessed for that and work. The living entities who display the life symptoms are better. Animals with developed consciousness are better than them, and better still are those who have developed sense perception. Yeah. Yes. In the previous uh, verse, it was explained that living entities should be honored by charitable gifts and uh, and friendly behavior. And in this verse, and in the following verses. The description of different grades of living entities is given so that one can know when to behave friendly and when to give charity. For example, a tiger is living entity, part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Supreme Lord is living in the heart of the tiger as super soul. But does this mean that we have to treat the tiger in a friendly manner? Certainly not. We have to treat him differently, giving him charity in the form of prasada. The many saintly persons in the jung jungles do not treat the tigers in a friendly way, but they supply prasada foodstuffs to them. The tigers come, take the food and go away just <clears throat> as a dog does. According to the Vedic, uh, Vedic system, a dog is not allowed to enter the house because of their uncleanliness, cats and dogs are not allowed within the apartments of a gentleman, but are so trained that uh, that they stand outside. The compassionate householder will supply uh, prasada to the dogs and cats who eat outside and then go away. We must treat the lower living entities compassionately, but this does not mean that we have to treat them in the same way we treat other human beings. The feeling or the feeling of equality must be there, but the treatment should be discriminating just now. Discrimination should be maintained is given in the following six verses uh, concerning the different grades of living conditions. The first division is made between dead uh, stone-like matter and the living uh, organism. A living organism is sometimes uh, manifested even in stone. Uh, experience shows that some, some hills and mountains grow. This is due to presence of the soul within that stone. Above the next, about, uh, above that, the next manifestations of the living condition is development of consciousness and the next manifestation is the development of sense perception. In the Moksha, Moksha Dharma section of the Mahavarta, uh, it is stated uh, that trees have developed sense perception. They can see the smell, they can see and smell. We know by experience that trees can see. Sometimes in its growth, a large tree changes its course of development to avoid some hindrance. Uh, this means that a tree can see and according, according to Mahavarta, a tree also smell. This indicates the development of sense perception. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So here uh, it is being explained uh, the consciousness of uh, the various things actually from the 
example of uh, uh, here the example of dead stone like that uh, and the other uh, other living entities like trees and all uh, is being explained so consciousness uh, there is the two things uh, the consciousness and sense per perception being explained here so the the living entities uh, development of the consciousness and the manifestation of sense perception is being explained here in this verse so here this verse is about the gradation of the universe and all. so yeah uh, in the 20 line, uh, in the text 20 line, among the living entities who have developed sense perception, those who have developed the sense of the taste are better than those who have developed the sense of touch, better than them are those who have developed the sense of smell, and better uh, and better still are those who have developed the sense of hearing. So here, are the, the, the how the how the gradation or which among the uh, species or which among the living entities are superior, okay? Based on the based on the sense of taste, based on the sense of touch, based on the sense of smell, or based on the sense of hearing, okay? So based on that, uh, based on these senses, actually which uh, which uh, living entity is termed as a uh, as a superior and all uh, that is being explained, okay? So purport. Yeah, can everybody read the purport of 29 text? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Although Westerners accept that Darwin first expounded the doctrine of evolution, the science of anthropology is not new. The development of the evolution pro evolutionary process was known long before from the Bhagavatam, which, which was written 5,000 years ago. There are records of the statements of Kapilamuni, who was present almost in the beginning of the creation. This knowledge has existed since the Vedic time, and all these sequences are disclosed in Vedic literature. The theory of gradual evolution or anthropology uh, is not new to the Vedas. Okay. Yeah. It is said here that amongst the trees, there are also evolutionary process. The different kinds of trees have touch uh, perception. In It is said that better than the trees, there are fish because fish has developed the sense of taste. Better than the fish, there are bees who has developed the sense of smell and better than the, them are the serpents because serpents have developed the sense of hearing. In the dark, in the darkness of night, a snake can find it eatable simply by hearing uh, the frog's very pleasant cry. The snake can understand. There is a frog and he captures the frog simply because it's a sound vibration. This example is sometimes given for perception person who vibrates sound simply for death. One, one may have a very nice tongue that can vibrate sound like a frog, but the kind of vibration is simply calling death. The best use of tongue of, and of sound vibration is to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama. That will protect one from hands of the cru cruel death. Thank you. Thank you. So how the uh, how the uh, the evolution, right? How these uh, uh, various examples have been given, like right? how uh, the finally the state example is given, where it has the capacity to hear, hear actually, and uh, uh, hear. So that is the highest about the. Uh, about the living entities, right? The living entities in the sense, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the living entity which has the sense, uh, sense of taste is better than the sense of touch and sense of uh, smell is better than the sense of hearing. So, so uh, the state he has the ability to hear and uh, it has an ability to hear to the frog, right? Here to the frog, and it, it can uh, capture the frog and eat away, right? 
so that is being explained so the yeah proper right nicely writes about how we can utilize the tongue for the benefit of the chanting also and also for the taste and that right so yeah so how the how one living entity is superior to other uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with respect to the cells as has been explained here let us quickly go to the verse 30 text 30 better than those the living entities who pursue sound are those who are distinguished between one form and, and, and another better than them are those who have developed upper and lower sets of teeth and better still are those who have very legs. Better than better them are the quadru, uh, quadrupeds, and better still are the human beings. But, but it is said that the subtle birds such as crows can distinguish one's one's uh, form from another. Living entities that have many legs, like the wasp, are better than the plants and the grasses, which have no legs. Four-legged animals are better than many-legged living entities, and better the animals, better the animals is the human beings who have two legs. So here, the, how the living entities uh, have different legs based on the legs, who is the superior, as being explained here, right? So, yeah. then, so this is all about the gradation of jivas, right? So all jivas. Uh, who is superior to which jiva is superior to other jiva is being explained in all these verses till 36 actually. So it's interesting. Thing. Yeah. Text 31. Among the human beings, the society which has divided according to the quality of work is the best. And in that society, the intelligent men who has designated as the Brahmanas are the best. Among the Brahmanas, one has who has studied the Vedas is the best. And among the Brahmanas who has studied the who has studied the Vedas and one who knows the actual purpose of the Veda is the best. Now, among the human beings, actually, who is the best has been explained here, right? By the Kapila Dev, right? So among the among the human beings, who has the who is the best? One who one work one who work the quality uh, quality and work is the best and one who is intelligent is the best and among them the brahmanas are the best among them the vaishnavas are the best but who, who can read the purport uh, that is what we so various who is the best has been explained here can somebody read the purport please thank you the system of the system of four classifications in human society according to the quality and work is very scientific. This system of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishna, uh, Vaishyas, and Sudras are now become uh, wait, wait, what is it? Vitiated. as a, as present caste system in India. But it appears that. This system has been current a very long time since it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Unless there is such a deviation of the social order in human society, including the intelligent class, the uh, marital class, and the ma and the merchantile class and labor class, uh, uh, there there is always a confusion as to who is to work for what purpose. A person trained in the stage of understanding the absolute truth is a brahmana and when such brahmanas in the uh, in veda gnan have understand the purpose of vedas the purpose of veda is under, understand and absolute one who understands absolute truth in three phases namely brahmana brahman paramatma and bhagavan who understands the term bhagavan to mean the Supreme Personality of Godhead is considered to be the best of the Brahmanas or the Vaishnavas. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. So here, uh, it is explained one who, who knows the purpose of the Vedas is the best actually. So purpose, pur the purpose of the Vedas, uh, the purpose of the Vedas is to learn and uh, you have to understand the, uh, the Lord, right? So here, the one who understands the Lord 
uh, in the three primary portions, uh, in the three phases, Brahman, Paramatman, and Bhagwan, right? Uh, one who understands the Bhagwan uh, the, is considered to be the best among the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. Let's so quickly move on to 32. Better than the Brahmanas who know the purpose of the Vedas is, is he who dissipates all doubts and better than him is the one who strictly follows the Brahmanical schemes. But better than him is the one who is liberated from all the material contamination and better than him is the pure devotee who executes the devotional service without exception of the uh, without exception of the word. Perfect. Artha Jnana Brahmana refers to one who made thorough analytical study of the absolute truth and who knows that the absolute truth is realized in three different phases, namely Brahman, Paramatman and Bhagavan. If someone, if someone not only has the knowledge but is able to clear all the all the doubts are questioned about the absolute truth, he is, con he is considered better. Further, there is only learned Brahmana, Brahmana Vaishnava who can explain, yeah, explain clearly, they eradicate all doubts, but if he does not follow the Vaishnava principles, then he is not situated in the higher level. One who is able to clear all the doubts and simultaneously be situated in the Brahminical character, such a person who knows the proper, the, uh, sorry, who knows the purpose of the Vedic invention, who can employ the principles laid down in the Vedic literature, and who teaches his disciples in that way, is called the Acharya. The, the position of Acharya is that he executes devotion service with no desire for elevation to the higher position of the life. The highest perfect, the, the highest perfection Brahmana is the Vaishnava. The Vaishnava who knows the science of the absolute truth, but but he is not able to preach such knowledge to others is described to be being in the lower stage, lower stage, one who is not only understands the principles of the science of God, but can also preach uh, is in this second stage. And one who, one who is not only can preach, but who also sees everything in absolute and absolute truth is everything in highest class of Vaishnava. It is mentioned here the Vaishnava is already a Brahmana. In fact, the highest stage of Brahmanical perfection is, uh, is reached when one is one, one sorry, when one becomes the Vaishnava. Okay. So, so who is who is actually uh, so Brahmana or Vaishnava who is the uh, who is the pure devotee, right? Who is, the, who, is, who is the actually highest stage? Who is in the highest stage being explained here? Yeah, can we, somebody read 33 uh, translation for me? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yeah. Shall I read it, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Translation. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Therefore, I do not find a greater person that he who has no interest outside of mind and who therefore engages and dedicate, dedicates all his activities and all his life, everything unto me without cessation. Cessation. Okay. Shall I continue? Yeah, yeah, okay. In this verse, the word samadrushtantu means that he no longer has any separate interest. The devotee interest and the supreme person of the Godhead interest are one. For example, Lord Chaitanya is a role of a devotee, also preached. The same philosophy. He preached the Krishna. He preached that the Krishna is the worshipable Lord, the supreme person of the Godhead. And that the, that the interest of his pure devotees is the same as his one. Sometimes, Mayavadi philosophers, due to poor fund of knowledge, define the word Samadarshan to the mean that a devotee should see 
himself as one with the supreme person of the godhead this is foolishness when one thinks himself one with the supreme person of the godhead there is no question of serving him when there is a service there must be a master three things must be present for for there to be service the master the servant and the service here it is clearly stated that he who has dedicated his life all his activity his mind and his soul everything for the satisfaction of the supreme lord he is considered to be the greatest person shall i continue prabhu yes sir okay the word akruta means without any sense of proprietorship everyone wants to act to the act as the proprietor of his actions so that he can enjoy the result a devotee however has no such desire he acts because the personality of the godhead and wants him to act in a particular way he has no personal motive when lord chaitanya preached krishna consciousness it it was not with the purpose that the people would call him krishna the supreme person of the godhead rather he preached that the krishna is the supreme person of the godhead and should be worshiped as such a devotee who is most confidential servant of the lord never does anything for his personal account but does everything for the satisfaction of the supreme lord therefore it is clearly stated that my sanyas sanyasta karmanah the devotee works but he works for the supreme it is also stated my ap my arpitha manah he gives his mind unto me therefore these are qualifications of a devotee who according to this verse is accepted as the highest of all human beings hari bol hare krishna such a wonderful purport thank you very much prabhu ji yeah here the qualification of uh, the, the qualifications of devotees has been explained and who is the above the highest and who is above the highest as we explained actually right so uh, your papa is uh, trying to uh, write a very nice purport where we see uh, uh, sabadarshila right no uh, we see uh, every living entity uh, as equal and all uh, right a devotee sitters in supreme person and that is one uh yeah lord chaitanya is a role uh, he as a he, 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 he was a lord and also he preached so the same philosophy he preached the krishna uh, as a worshipful lord so supreme personality of god is and that the synthesis of the pure devotees is same as his own so but the mayavadi figure the papa writes about mayavadi they are they try to become one with the god Uh, actually uh, because they want to enjoy actually you know? so if they want to enjoy then the proprietorship there is a, uh, that means uh, they are thinking they such as a proprietor actually not the lord and all so but if you are trying to be uh, separate from the master and if you want to serve the master then that means that we are in the in, in the correct position actually you know? we are in the servitorship position right now but the various mother mayavadis are in the opposite are opposite actually they want to merge with the lord so that they can enjoy uh, enjoy uh, enjoy uh, similar to the lord and all but, but a real devotee uh, will will try to uh, see himself as separate from the lord Uh, so that he wants to serve the lord not to enjoy with the lord uh, equally with the lord but to serve the lord actually so proper he nicely writes about uh, three things the master the servant and the service so so there is a difference between the understanding between the devotee and a mayavadi and the devotee's understanding is is considered to be the highest and all okay so that is being explained okay
So, uh, with respect to the proprietorship and this license. So, yeah. Trans so, 34th verse. Can somebody read 34th verse? Probably? Such a perfect devotee offers respect to every living entity. If there is nobody, shall I read? Yes, Martin. Can you read? Translation. Such a perfect devotee offers respects to every living entity because he is under the firm conviction that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has entered the body of every living entity as the super soul or controller. Purple. A perfect devotee, as described above, does not make the mistake of thinking that because the supreme personality of Godhead as Paramatma has entered into the body of every living entity, every living entity has become the supreme personality of Godhead. This is foolishness. Suppose a person enters into a room, that doesn't mean that the room has become that person. Similarly, that the Supreme Lord has entered into each of the 84 lakhs particular types of material that bodies does not mean yes, some, uh, some sound is coming, Prabhuji. Somebody's yeah, talking. I'll, I'll mute, I'll mute. Yeah, you can read. Because the Supreme Lord is present, however, a pure devotee accepts each body as the temple of the Lord. And since the devotee offers respect to such temples in full knowledge, he gives respect to every living entity in relationship with the Lord. Mayavadi philosophers wrongly think that because the Supreme Person has entered the body of a poor man, the Supreme Lord has become Taridra Narayana or poor Narayana. These are all uh, blasphemous statements of atheists and non-devotees. Hare Krishna. Yes, thank you. Thank you so here again the, uh, the the perfect devotee the who is called as a perfect devotee is being explained so as in the previous verse also where uh, the perfect devotee has do not have any interest actually uh, no interest uh, other than the lord and all so he uh, he doesn't see anything outside outside of the lord so yes uh, no interest in, uh, other than uh, other things outside the Lord and, uh, and he dedicates all the activities unto, uh, unto, unto the Lord. That, uh, that is what the perfect devotee is, uh, is, uh, is uh, being defined. And, uh, and here also, uh, here in this verse, uh, here the Kapil Dev is trying to explain uh, the devotee is a person who offers the respect, right? Respect. And uh, since he, he sees, because uh, he sees the Lord, Lord has entered in every every living entity. Uh, that's why he offers his respect because he sees the, uh, the the super soul and the soul aspect in the living entity. That's why he respects every living entity that is being displayed. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, here the proper gives nice example if a person is. Entering a room, actually, it doesn't become a room and all. Huh? That person is a different, and the room itself is also different. Okay, uh, that is what nice example being given. But the Mayavad think in a different way. Right. So, so what we have to understand from this is uh, a perfect devotee actually uh, is a, uh, is offer respects offer respect to all the living entities because he sees every living entity uh, he sees super soul actually he sees super soul in every living entity that's why he offers respect to all the living entities okay yeah the text 35 translation by dear mother or oh daughter of balu a devotee who applies the science of devotional service and mystic yoga in this way can achieve the abode of supreme personal person simply simply by the devotional service. Yeah. So yeah, here the Kapila Dev actually concludes, right? We, we try to conclude uh, what is the IS like bhakti yoga and ashtanga. He concludes about bhakti yoga and ashtanga yoga, right? He concludes about the devotional service and mystic yoga. 
भक्ति होगा अभी रियलाइजेशन बेड भी अभी भगवान अष्टांग योग अर्मिस्टिक योग अष्टांग योग अष्टांग योग सुप्रीम पर्सन ऑफ गॉड हेड परफेक्टली एक्सप्लेन Eight different kinds of yoga activities has to be performed with the aim of coming to perfection stage of bhakti, bhakti yoga. It is not acceptable for one to be satisfied simply by practicing the sitting postures and thinking himself complete. By meditation, one must attain the stage of devotional service, as previously describes. Yogi is advised to meditate on the form of Lord Vishnu from the point to point, from the ankles to the legs, to the knees, to the tights of the chest, to the neck, and in the, to the ornaments. There is no question of impersonal meditation. When the meditation on the supreme person of the Godhead in detail, in all detail. one comes to the point of love of god that is the point of bhakti yoga and service to the lord out of transcendental love anyone who practice comes to the point of devotional service can attain the supreme person of the god head in his transcendental abode Hmm. Shall I continue, Prabhu? Here yes, it is sir. clearly stated. Shall I continue, Prabhu? Yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead, Prabhu. Yes. Here it is clearly stated. Purusham, Rijet, the Purusha, the living entity, goes to the supreme person. The supreme person of the Godhead and the living entity are qualitatively one, but are defined as the Purusha. <clears throat> The the quality of the purusha exist both in the supreme person of the Godhead, living entity. Purusha means enjoyer, and the living entities end in the supreme Lord. The difference is that quantity of the enjoyment is no, please come closer to the light. Not equal. The living entity cannot experience the same quantity. Is this better, Prabhu? No. Yeah, yeah, it is better. Okay. There is some gap section. Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. The quality of Purusha exists in both Supreme Godhead and in the living entity. Purusha means enjoy, and uh, and and the spirit of enjoyment. Okay, and and the spirit of enjoyment is present in both living entity and the Supreme Lord. the difference is that the quantity of enjoyment is not equal the living entity cannot experience the same quantity of enjoyment as the supreme personality of the of godhead an analogy may be made with a rich man and a poor man 
when a poor man devotes his desires okay with those of rich man however and when there is a cooperation between the poor man and the rich man or between uh, the big and small man then the enjoyment is shared equally that is like bhakti yoga purusha purusha purusham okay varjet when the living entity enters into the kingdom of god and cooperates with the supreme lord by giving him enjoyment he enjoys the same facility or the same amount of pleasure as the supreme person of the god head मेटीरियल एटमोस्फियर A living entity who wants to enjoy on his personal account and not cooperate with the supreme lord is engaged in materialistic life. As soon as he dwells in enjoyment with supreme person of God, he is engaged in spiritual life. An example may be cited here: the different limbs of the body cannot enjoy the life independently. They must cooperate with with the whole body and supply food to the stomach. In so doing, all the different parts of the body enjoy equally in the cooperation with the whole body. That is the philosophy of Ashita Veda 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 Abheda. Simultaneously, one and different, the living entity cannot enjoy life in opposition to the supreme lord. As uh, supreme lord, he has to do do tell his activities with the lord by practicing bhakti yoga. Yeah, you can read the last paragraph. it is said here will that one can approach the supreme personality of god in by either the yoga process or bhakti yoga process this indicates that factually there is no difference between the yoga and bhakti yoga because the target of both is restored in the modern age however yoga process has been manufactured which aims at something wide and impersonal actually Yoga means meditation on the form of Lord Vishnu. If the yoga practice is actually performed according to the standard direction, there is no difference between yoga and bhakti yoga. Okay. Okay. I think we'll end it here. We have completed thirty-five till thirty-five. Okay. So here the Kapila Dev is uh, trying to conclude. Conclude. About the bhakti yoga and the the uh, the ashtanga yoga, right? The bhakti yoga will 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 lead to Bhagwan uh, realization, and the ashtanga yoga will lead to the personal Brahman realization as well. Okay, so that is being explained to the to the Bhagat Devoti as well. Okay, so yeah, so what uh, just uh, just a recap for uh, two minutes and. Can have some questions and all. So there were some questions in the start of the chapters. There were some questions being asked by the devotee, uh, mother devotee to Kapila Dev. So try to uh, maybe, maybe the questions related to path of bhakti and the nature of time. And uh, the verses will from thirty six to forty five will be based on the nature of time. We'll explain the nature of time. And now, so we have covered mostly uh, the the verses related to the path of bhakti from twenty to thirty five actually. So, so here previously uh, the uh, Kapila Dev explained the Sankhya philosophy and yoga system to the Mother Devoti, but uh, they, on the request by the Mother uh, Devoti, he tried to uh, he, uh, our her desire to hear about the bhakti, right? So uh, based on our request uh, on the process of the bhakti, we try to explain here. Uh, uh, here, so he has explained uh, in this chapter about the bhakti, how it is affected by the gunas, what is the pure bhakti, 
and we have also seen today what are the uh, how to respect all the living beings and all right uh, we have covered some of the obstacles or some of the offenses that uh, that is done uh, in the path of bhakti so we uh, we big big neglectful hatredness criticism and all and we have seen some of the examples of bharat maharaj uh, for uh, for the big neglectful and we have seen some examples of hatred and criticism right uh, and all and so what is the solution for for the offenses uh, caused in the path of bhakti so uh, there are some solutions prescribed here by the lord kapil dev uh, to so that we can realize the presence of lord everywhere so we have to perform our duty based on our varna and ashrama right and also we have to worship the deities and all slowly we will try to uh, realize uh, uh, realize the presence of lord everywhere and also uh, we can behave friendly with all the living entities right we have we can give, give charity and offer respects and have equal vision towards uh, every living entity okay so this uh, this this process is has been explained by lord kapil dev uh, so so as to have the highest kind of uh, realization right so that is what it is so we should not uh, if you do it should not have any interest other than uh, other than the lord actually so you should uh, ask uh, you should uh, respect all the living entities since the essence Uh, since uh, the super soul is present in all the living entities, so he has to, he has to offer respect to the, all the living entities and all. So this is what we explain, and the Kapil Dev concludes actually the Bhakti Yoga and Astanga Yoga in there. And uh, further, the next question which which brother has to, uh, on the on the on the nature of time being explained uh, from the. For thirty six to forty fifth verse, right? probably that will be covered by the next week by somebody. So thank you uh, for the for this. Actually, thank you for uh, actually giving this opportunity, Pravin Prabhu, uh, Pravin Prabhu ji and all. Uh, I do. I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but I do not have any uh, any qualification. But I try to read along with you and all. Uh, uh, there are some. Maybe some mistakes, some offenses caused during this process. Please forgive me, and we can open for some questions if you are. Hare Krishna, attention, Prabhu Prabhu. Wonderful session, Prabhu. With so many examples, so wonderful, Prabhu Prabhu. Okay, you have made all of us to read it and understand. It. Okay, really wonderful, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Janatana, Makki Jan, Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for taking this class in a short notice. I know it's uh, you know, uh, Sri Giriraj Prabhu just done, but because uh, of his services, uh, we needed somebody. And uh, thank you for jumping in and taking it. And these are the purports that are like gold, Prabhu. Yeah, we have to read them again and again. And uh, please, uh, humble obeisances to you for making us all go through it and read it. And wonderful explanations. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Dhanvat Pranam. Thank you, Prabhu. Dhanvat Pranam. Thank you, Prabhu. 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 Thank you,